Hello, Seth here, and today I'm going to be showing off the basics, well, at least for today, the basics of setting up a Minecraft server, your very own. So, first off, you should download minecraftserver.jar, which you can find on minecraft.net, and then downloads. So, you can either choose to download the exe, or the jar, Personally, I prefer the jar because it has it's much more flexible, and the exe doesn't does take more like resources as well. But uh, for this example, I'll be using the jar, and not just any jar, the latest actually, the 12w08a. So, yeah, it's got all the latest things, including like world height. So first, to get started, just double click it and uh, run it. So, give it a little while to load. And yeah, so, if you just click that, yes, you may access stuff from the firewall. It could, it will ask you that, and if you're not an administrator, um, it'll just block it. So, you need to be an administrator of the computer to use it as a server. At least in Windows 7. Well, Vista maybe as well. I don't know. But, Yep, this one gives you everything. It gives you the log and the chat. It gives you, for my, at least in my case, it tells me I can't keep up. So let's see if I close this. Okay. Yeah. Currently learning Java, so it's probably going to help it a bit. But yep, so here it tells you the memory use. Tells you threads, average tick, average send, average size, average record, average size again, level zero tick, which is the overworld, level one is nether, level two is the end. So as you can see, the, the ones that take the least are usually the end or the nether. But uh, yeah, once you get there, just type in stop and it stops the server. So, I mean, this is pretty heavy stuff. I mean, it does take up a lot of your RAM. So, what you like to do is copy this script right here on Minecraft.net download. So, hopefully, you didn't close that. If you did, then you can have to reopen it. Just copy paste it. Then open Notepad. Where is Notepad? Nah, I can change that directly. Um, let's see. Yeah, because I can change the file extensions. So, server dot bat. So you can you save it as a batch file. Um, yeah, but if I uh, see on uh, Notepad, it pretty much be you type that in and then save as. Here you just type in server dot bat. Then you'd save it like that, and it'd give you the, save it as the extension. So then you can edit it, and then save it, and then it'll run Minecraft server for you. Um, let's see. Typo. It's supposed to be dash non G no GUI. Is that a typo? On, I think it might be a typo. On, yeah. Minecraft.net. Um, that's weird. I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, let me get back to you. Done a bit of research. I have no idea why it does that, but uh, I don't know. No clue what's happening there. Oh, we'll stop it and uh, I'll explain what the server properties are. So. First off, you got allow nether, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's, do you want the nether? If you do, then set it to true. If you don't, set it to false. Level name, world. So, what's the name of the world? Level. So, world, in my case. Enable query. Now, I'm not sure what that does, but just leave it false. Allow flight is, do you want people to be able to use Zom's mod and all that to fly? 
you're making a survival server, set it to false. If you're making like a building server or creative server, set it to true. Because that's really convenient. Server port, don't mess with that, but that's uh, what port your, com your server will communicate with. Level type, default. Leave that default as well. I think that's if you can set the default world to be like not nether or something like that. Enable archon, also ignore, ignore that. Level seed, it's a seed. Server IP, that's internal IP. Don't mess with it unless you know what you're doing and you want to set up a multi-computer server like, I don't know, you've got a really popular server and you've got a couple racks or something, then do that. Uh, max build height, 256. Yeah, that's uh, what the new format supports, but if you want, you can always change it back to 128, but I still suggest leaving it 256. Spawn NPCs. Self-explanatory again. Do you want it to spawn NPCs? Whitelist is do you want to control who joins and who doesn't? For example, if you do have a whitelist, you can add in what well, Seth MG, which is my name. Random user best friend if I can spell that, twenty-three person who griefs five by type in a two you know, yeah that's what you do and then if you set whitelist to true only these four people could join but we're not gonna bother saving that spawn animals do you want animals to spawn online mode leave it to true unless you're making a local server and uh, I don't know minecraft.net is down or if you've cracked the game. Shame on you if you did. If you cracked the game, this is how you would do it. Put it online mode to false. At least for your local area network. Not for online. There's other ways to do that, but I'm not gonna go into that because first off I don't know and second of all second of all, I don't support people who crack Minecraft. So then PvP. Do you want people to able to do you want people to be able to hurt each other? Difficulty, that's just like normal difficult difficulty. Zero is peaceful, one it is easy, two is normal, three is hard, four might be hardcore, five, I don't know. Leave it to one. Game mode, zero is survival and one is creative. Max players, what's the maximum amount of players you want? Spawn monsters, do you want monsters to spawn? Generate structures, do you want villages and dungeons and... Stuff like that to spawn. View distance. That is uh, how far do you want like uh, stuff to people to be able to see, I think. Or maybe how far the chunks load. I think with the chunks. And uh, message of the day, which will change to Seth is amazing. Because I'm just that modest. But... Let's run it, and uh, while we run it, we'll also try and run Minecraft, and ignore the ridiculously long password as well. So, when we run Minecraft, this is going to lag pretty badly, I can predict. Okay, let's go. So, local Seth MG, outdated client, great, let me fix that, okay, sorry, I just knocked my pot filter over, um, okay, so now, should work, and, uh, yeah, let's go. So logging in, it should get mad at me and just, you know, be really slow and laggy. But, yeah, the lag is, to a degree, bearable. And, let's be honest, it's too bad. It's not, I only play with only like five or six more frames per second than this. So, it's bearable. 
to a degree. And, uh, yeah, I saw an enderman over there. Just the temptation of... Ow. I hate this, but, uh... Yeah, since it's 12W08A, the lighting is a bit messed up, I think. Hello, creeper. Hello, skeleton. Yeah, so... I probably just made a mistake coming down here in the first place, but... I'll die eventually, but either way, yeah. It works. And that's for your local area network. Now, just to a general plan of my series, I'm going to be introducing how to make a bucket server next. Because those are infinitely better. Come on, just kill me. I want to get back up to the surface. Okay, so that they're just they're just stupid. Okay, so this guy will kill me while I explain. Pretty much, um, yeah, that's it for the series. Setting up uh, your own vanilla server is pretty easy, actually. As you can see, yeah, uh, that's the CPU usage. I think gets mad at me because yeah, can't keep up. It's running like, uh, yeah, too much. So, disconnect, yeah. And, uh, yeah, stop the server, and there you have it. Your own local area network server. Next up, bucket servers.